How is the Department of Science and Technology helping promote the use of e-vehicles among Filipinos? Joining us is Enrico Paringit, Executive Director of the DOST's Philippine Council for Industry, Energy and Emerging Technology Research and Development. Good evening, Dr. Paringit. Good evening, Mai. Good evening to all uh, uh, viewers of uh, uh, the show. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, Doctor, let us pick up from that story earlier. The Board of Investments says the zero tariffs on electric vehicles is expected to be implemented next year. I, I want to get your thoughts on this and how this will help your promotion of e-vehicles in the country. Yeah, actually, we were uh, sort of anticipating this uh, development uh, because, uh, of course, a lot of uh, our um, investors as well as uh, developers of uh, uh, e-vehicle technologies uh, from parts to uh, components to uh, the assembly of the uh, e-vehicles are actually uh, eager to have this uh, pass through. You know, one of the um, constraints that we're looking at uh, the growth no? that, that's restraining the growth of the industry is the cost of uh, the units. Mm -hmm. So uh, if this uh, uh, this passes through, then uh, that's one hurdle that's uh, that's already been uh, um, uh, met. Yes, well, certainly. And one of the reasons why the DOSD launched its e-mobility program is to decrease dependence on imported fuel. Now we all know why this is important, but uh, can you expound further on the benefits of this? Yes, aside from uh, you know not, not having this um, vulnerability to uh, rising you know, uh, prices of uh, fossil fuels, we're also looking at uh, uh, at this from an industrial uh, development standpoint. Mm -hmm. uh, if we have a lot of this uh, uh, e-vehicle industry um, uh, in place in the country, this will also provide uh, jobs and uh, economic opportunities to uh, many of our uh, developers, uh, mechanics, and technicians. Uh, of course, uh, this would also uh, redound to some uh, benefit to the environment because of the uh, use of uh, uh, better alternatives other than using uh, uh, fossil fuel. Mm -hmm. well, so for us, actually, it's, it's all these technologies coming together. Yes. Well, where is the DOST now in terms of promoting the use of e-vehicles? How is the program coming along and how will the promotion of the e-vehicles aid our environmental commitments? Yes. Uh, well, really the thrust of uh, the e-vehicle program of uh, the UST is to ensure that uh, we only uh, we have a very stable uh, 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 and uh, uh, mass-based uh, transport so this includes uh, trusts for making it digital mass-based and uh, keep it uh, keeping it uh, clean and green so uh, in uh, dust uh, particularly be sure we have of course uh, supported uh, the development of our mass transit system uh, from five six years back we have uh, launched the hybrid electric train the hybrid electric road train these are all uh, battery uh, run and then, then the uh, automated guideway transit. We've even uh, uh, supported the development of the standard uh, electric Jeep as we know it, as, uh, as defined uh, uh, for by the law. And recently, uh, maybe in the last year or so, we have established a uh, e-mobility center, which actually developed this uh, e-trike. And for those that are you know, uh, on the budget, they could actually convert their tricycles into uh, gasoline run tricycles into what we call the converted uh, tricycles. Mm -hmm. So these are exciting uh, uh, developments mm -hmm. taking place. And aside from that, of course, we all, since we're an archipelagic country, we, we don't forget about, you know, boats that are being run by electricity. So that's also uh, coming maybe by next year. It's, it's going to start uh, floating. Yes. Very and uh, lastly, uh, we're also looking at charging stations as one possible area of uh, one development, uh, in fact, that's uh, exciting because we've been able to support and has, uh, in fact, successfully commercialized a uh, uh, fast charging station mm -hmm. technology. Yeah, you mentioned the charging stations and uh, how many of them are scattered among uh, the metropolis and the roads. Because um, this is one of the reasons, I believe, uh, of the slow acceptance of e-trikes or e-vehicles 
among uh, drivers and operators, right? Um, I was going to ask, how is this being addressed? Yes, uh, you're right, uh, Mai. Uh, in the past, uh, there have been uh, some concerns about this low charging uh, capacity of the charging stations that are being supplied together with the e-trikes that were uh, proliferated from, uh, say, maybe eight years back. So we have a group of researchers uh, that have developed a fast charging uh, uh, unit that's like you know seven times faster than uh, than the ones that are uh, currently available, and uh, we've been able to support the uh, deployment of this. Uh, we had uh, some pilot stations or pilot uh, yeah uh, charging stations set up in uh, Quezon City, uh, Miralco, and uh, uh, the Quezon City government actually helped uh, put this up. Uh, this is for us a way to demonstrate uh, that uh, it is mature enough to be supported, uh, that they are safe, that they do not uh, damage at all the uh, electric uh, vehicles that are, that are going to be charged. Mm -hmm. So soon, because it's already available uh, commercially, in fact, uh, this has spun off uh, from the university as a, uh, uh, as a commercialized uh, product. So we're looking at uh, the proliferation further into many parts mm -hmm. uh, of the country. If not, uh, they're uh, also uh, actually planning to uh, deploy this uh, even outside. Yes, when can we see more uh, fast charging stations that will be accessible to the e-trike drivers? Yes, uh, this depends, of course, on the um, uh, promotion of the uh, the company that already spun that off. I, I believe that they already have a couple of orders already uh, coming uh, down the line. We've heard that they're trying to supply uh, units to up to uh, 25,000 uh, units of tricycles all over, uh, say, this is just for Quezon City. And uh, there were 300,000 more that were deployed elsewhere in the country. So this is really uh, taking off. Uh, for the other technologies, uh, there's already a company that uh, has uh, uh, started to mass produce the electric uh, Jeep. And for the others, we're at the uh, testing stage of uh, development testing stage of the e-boat. Uh, and uh, for the mass transit, of course, the, uh, the prototype has been uh, running well uh, and uh, already certified by uh, PNR. Uh, and is running the Alabang uh, Calamba route, if I'm not mistaken. So mm -hmm. we uh, were looking at uh, investors to come in and uh, perhaps uh, take a look at this as, uh, as, as uh, future opportunities for business in the country. Mm -hmm. Well, exciting developments indeed. And uh, more power on your efforts in promoting green, sustainable and climate resilient cities. Thank you for your insights and your time this evening. Um, and Dr. Enrico Paringit, DOST PCIEERD Executive Director.